Bonjour tout le monde. Ah, je souhaite que euh, tout le monde passe un, un bon soirée. Pour moi, je suis un peu fatigué parce que il y a un parc euh, là-bas et j'ai couru. Alors, <laughs> euh, mes pieds, ils sont fatigués. Uh, I am with my son Phoenix. Where is he? Right there he is. Say hi, Phoenix. Hello. And we're going to be going to a few awesome places. I'm going to kill him here with museums. We're going to first go to uh, Musée Rodin, Rodin's museum. I'm going to mainly be in the gardens because that's where I want to be. Because um, I want to see the thinker. If we get time, I'm going to even go to the Louvre. Because why not? Let's just kill it. Yeah, bye. Let's go. Come on. Hey, bonjour tout le monde. J'arrive. We are here. And um, it was a long, long train ride, but it was worth it. It's gorgeous out here in France, but when is it not? There's Phoenix. He's helping me out. Point is, guess how much it was to get in here for him? It's free. There he is in all his glory, right? Uh, did you know it was outside? Most people don't know that it was it's a sculpture that's outside. And he's really big. Look at Phoenix there. I think he's starting to lay down, but he's tired. Okay, so it gives you an idea of the scale. Two things I love about Rodin that, um, one is that I was really good at doing the muscles. I mean, just really great anatomy. The other is, and you'll see it when we go inside to do, to do uh, one of my favorite Rodin sculptures, is the way that he could sculpt intricate little areas, um, especially if he was working, you know, this isn't like, if it was something he was uh, sculpting from one piece, but the point is he could do folds like there was no, I mean, come on, like Michelangelo is probably the only person I can think that was probably just about as good as Rodin, but the uh, point being is he could make tiny areas, right? Just cut around tiny areas, but man, what a great sculpture. I love that it's outside. <laughs> So we made our way through the uh, sculptures. I didn't really stop to talk much because it's dead quiet and I have no quiet voice. But anyway, we finally made it to the room that I really wanted to show you where the sculpture, ah, oh, it's so awesome, so awesome. You gotta see this thing. Okay, I'm gonna turn around. Boom. Oh my gosh, isn't that amazing? It's amazing and the light in here is perfect. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to kind of take you around the sculpture and maybe I'll narrate this later, but maybe you can just let the sculpture speak for itself. But let's just zoom over to that bad boy. Oh boy, wait, there it is. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Um, it's actually bigger than you would think. I didn't think it was beyond life size, but it really is. But the other thing that I really want to talk about is how smooth it is, which is such a skill. The fact he sculpted this from one single piece of stone is just nuts. Really, I think what he was throwing down in this one was just incredible ability for uh, proportions, scale, smooth, which is what it really speaks to this. I mean, it's so different in comparison to the thinker that's got these really rough textures and edges, right? And the only rough texture of this is the base. I mean, he, cut, he like compensates it with um, the, the really smooth skin and just the way the movement of that sculpture. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad I paid to come in here. It was worth the extra six euros. Oh God. Uh, I, can need, I need a moment. Hold on a second. So before we leave, I thought we'd take a little walk through the gardens. Um, and Phoenix just let me know apparently when I'm talking to the camera, especially in English, um, that everybody's looking at me, which I think is hilarious. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, a little bit of the sculpture gardens there and uh, of course the museum. Um, I didn't show you everything and I want you to go hopefully explore this at some point. All I know is it's perfect out here. It's gorgeous. 